Hello to fans, this is the Skull Clown. Um, sorry, I haven't been doing a video. It's been like two weeks since I haven't done a video. But uh, I just watched, well, not just watched, but a few days ago I did made a video on my Enlightenment channel talking about who framed Roger Rabbit. So I'm going to talk about it here. Not in a spiritual Enlightenment way at all. Just me giving more of how much I am as a fan and how much I love this movie. Um, if you haven't watched this movie, watch this movie any way you can. Get the DVD, Blu-ray, the 4K, does not matter. Watch it on Disney+. Plus. I don't give a fuck what you do. If you need to watch the shorts on YouTube before you watch the movie, go right fucking ahead just to get the feel of Roger Rabbit. Um, obviously, this is based on a book of who censored Roger Rabbit. So, if you want to read the book before the movie... Go ahead if you want to. The The book is completely different from the movie, just so you know. So you don't have to if you don't want to. But um, I'm actually, I, was, I thought I was going to get the book today. But I might get it, I mean, yesterday. But I'm getting it today. So, and, the DV, and I'm getting the 4K DVD also of um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So that's coming in the mail very soon. Maybe it might come today, maybe. But um, most likely the book of Who Censored Roger Rabbit comes in the mail today. Because... I uh, was waiting for that yesterday and didn't come at all. So moving on. Um, this movie was made by Steven Spielberg and directed by Robert Zemeckis. Without Steven Spielberg, this movie won't even be made, to be quite honest with you. And we won't even have some of the characters that are in this movie at all, to be quite honest with you. you um, mainly because no one didn't want to trust Disney with their licensed characters. So, and Disney picked this up, right, when the book came out, 1981, and they started making this movie around 1983, I believe. Eventually, it came out in 1988, and they were on a deadline. Like, they went over budget with this movie, guys. They went over budget with this movie. It made money. This movie made money. And surprisingly, they haven't been a prequel or a sequel to it, but I'll get to that soon. Or maybe I should talk about it right now before I forget. Again, I talked about this before too. So I'm going to talk about it again. Disney has announced that they're going to bring their hand-drawn animation back. And then all of a sudden, you have Chip and Dale movie. And then you have Roger Rabbit paying, um, has a cameo in it. And Robert Semeckis literally did said that he would love to make another Roger Rabbit movie. It's just up to Disney. And then they censored Jessica Rabbit. Like, now she wears a trench coat and shit like that. To be honest, she looks hot in the trench coat, too, by the way. Like, no matter what you do, Disney, to censor Jessica Rabbit, you're just going to make her more hotter. <laughs> and any woman that's offensive of what Jessica Rabbit looks like, you should, you, you literally, you literally should fall off a ditch. Because no one doesn't want your ass. No one doesn't want to fuck you. No one doesn't want to fucking smell that fucking pussy that you have. Right? No one doesn't want to lick that pussy either. All right? That's why that, That's why you want to go after a cartoon character. And be, and be like, oh, look at her body. Yeah, because your body is shit. That's why you shame other people's bodies. Because you don't love yourself. At least Jessica Rabbit loves herself. Because she wants to show her knockers anytime she wants. <laughs> Fun fact, by the way. All the porn shit that you see from Jessica Rabbit showing her titties and everything like that, that is more accurate to the book than the fucking movie. Yes. Would you believe that? Would you believe that Jessica Rabbit, that the you know, the 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 the, the fan art that you see of her, of her being naked, that is more close to the book than the movie. There's that right there, you know. <laughs> and Roger Rabbit looked it so different in the book. For kind of loud, he had like suspenders, uh, a yellow yellow short pants. It was probably um um green um flowers on them, and his suspenders had like scotch tape on them. I don't know if it's because it's broken from the top, but he had scotch tape on them. And his whole body is a uh, brown, a little bit um white here where his cheeks are at. And a little bit white in his chest area. So some people might know that. Some people might not. I just set that just for people that don't know. If you do know, then you do. Um, obviously, Roger, the design for Roger Rabbit in this movie was um, was inspired by Porky, 
Pokey Pig's tie, um, Bugs Bunny's face, well, cheeks, actually, uh, Mickey Mouse's um, yellow gloves, which is the 40s gloves, and Goofy's um, long pants, his baggy pants, which means, which means Roger Rabbit and Goofy, who, well, that means whoever has baggy pants has a huge... <laughs> Oh man! So I, I've just been watching videos of Who Framed Roger Rabbit from Nostalgia Critic to other YouTubers, and it's just great, you know. I even saw a video of Bob Walker breaking down how the movie is. So this movie is great. Again, this is not really a review. Review. This is mostly a, a video of me just talking about this movie. I love it that much. I really do. I grew up with this movie. I love it. I like it better than Space Jam. And if anyone says that Space Jam is better than this movie, you're fucking stupid, first of all. Why? Because the Looney Tunes in Space Jam are not funny. The Looney Tunes in this movie are fucking hilarious. And the Looney Tunes in Looney Tunes Back in Action, that movie's fucking hilarious too. I mean, it has problems, yes, but not like Space Jam. You know, and I'm not talking about, and look, if I'm, if I talk about Space Jam in a spiritual and enlightenment way, like I did in Who Frank, like I did with Who Frank Roger Rabbit in my other channel, we'd be here all day. Cause that movie, that movie alone, if you like stop looking at entertainment and you're looking at it in a knowledge way, Space Jam, you'd be like, wow. <laughs> Tip through Roger Rabbit, you know, but um, Roger Rabbit is a better movie. All right, and without Roger Rabbit, you wouldn't have Space Jam. Okay, seriously, I think we all like ever since Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out, everyone wants to do crossovers. Have you noticed that? I mean, we got it more important with the Avengers stuff, you know. So there's a lot of good like Bob Hoskins in this movie is fucking great. I even heard Bob Hoskins after he did this movie. He started seeing cartoons everywhere because he literally imagined it and he literally saw it while he was making the movie. And and after the movie, he started seeing literally cartoons. I told my friend that and, and that's how you know the brain is like a computer, guys. It's your program. Bob Hoskins literally programmed his brain to see literally cartoons so literally he can make this movie. You know, it's it's wild, man. Most people might not believe that shit. But you're not Bob Hoskins, man. You don't you didn't see what he saw. You know? And, and people don't take that in consideration. People think that, oh, I don't see you, so fuck you. And I'm like, well, go fuck yourself. That's like saying someone has cancer, but you don't see it, but you say go fuck themselves and get up from that fucking goddamn bed and start walking. At that point, man, you should get punched in the fucking goddamn throat. But you, and then you won't breathe for the rest of your life. I wouldn't mind that one bit for you. <laughs> okay. So, this movie is actually really mature for a Disney movie. They talk about sex, murder, and and all of that type of stuff. For a Disney movie, this movie is ahead of its time. Yes, because it talks about racial issues that are still going to this day. This movie takes place in, in 1947. And the fact that I told you guys that this movie is still relevant and it's still relevant to this day should, should put should give you a mindset that there's a problem in this world, in this planet. Right? Again, I'm not talking about no spiritual enlightenment stuff, but I'm going to say this right now. If color people don't change to fight or what we're supposed to be, you don't think that the white man is not going to fucking still put you down. I'm saying that right now. So going back to the movie. This, the animation to this movie is fucking phenomenal. Have you seen the movie Cool World? I haven't seen it, but the animation to that movie is fucking beautiful. And then the, the woman Hollywood, the way she's, the way she is, fucking sexy as fuck remember that one time when i said that animation is is sexualized and it's beautiful and sexy and it, and it should be sexualized and sexy because animation is sexy it is 
animation is sexy. For Clown and Lau, you don't have to draw a sexy woman to be like, oh, animation is sexy. You can look at the backgrounds. You can look at the foregrounds. Look at Cuphead. Look, go, going back, look at Cool Ward. You, it might not be a good movie, but look at the backgrounds. Look at the shit that they put in that movie. Look at, look at, um, Coonskin. The, these movies that I'm pointing out, they have good animation. Great fucking animation. Coonskin is a better movie than Cool Ward. And if you grab Coonskin and Hoofing Roger Rabbit, and you told me that, put, you put them in the same room, and you told me that, hey, one's more mature than the other. Yeah, I will agree with that. But if you told me, hey, you talk about subjects that are kind of related, I wouldn't disagree with you. And I'm planning to get that movie too. Um, 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 what is it? Coonskin. Because it, 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 touches, it touches upon some things that America doesn't want to talk about. That's why they make. That's why they had an American woman in that movie being a bitch, and starts and started treating colored people like shit. Because that's what America is. America is a is a beautiful, sexy, blonde, blue eyed woman that wants to kill colored people. That's America, whether you like it or not. Okay, seriously. And half of the population in this planet that are Caucasian would never admit that shit. That's why I have a problem with some people. And some of all people, too, that are color won't admit that shit either. And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? You're acting like racism is not even a thing. And there's and there's people out there that think that, that way, too. Oh, racism only happens to me. If it happened to you, maybe it's your fault. The fuck? This is, this is, this, this is the reason I point that out is because some of the stuff that my friend told me that, that someone told him. And he looked at him like a fucking idiot, you know? And I looked, and when he told me, I would have been like, yeah, I would have looked at him as an idiot too, you know? But um, going back, it does go to Who Framed Roger Rabbit and other stuff because this movie t- does touch upon racial stuff. For crying out loud, the, 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 the tunes don't have rights, basically. There's no justice for tunes anymore, right? You even have Judge Doom in this movie killing tunes. I'm not gonna. If you haven't seen this movie, I'm not gonna spoiler who's Judge Doom because you need to watch that movie for yourself to know that shit. And going back to Jessica Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit, Disney, you're stupid for censoring her because she is more famous now than ever than Roger, and you won't make a prequel to Roger Rabbit just because the way Jessica looks. Most um, look, I would have said redesign her, but you would have redesigned her literally with no ass and no titties. You would have literally redesigned her like what fucking Cartoon Network did with the Powerpuff Girl shit. The, the, if you guys don't know, the new Powerpuff Girl stuff, they literally censor the, the teacher, the, the teacher from the Powerpuff Girls, they literally censor her. She has no tits. Because all oh, I'm a th- because people are offended with tit tits. A grown woman got censored. A cartoon woman got censored because oh, titties. This is why I have a problem with some companies. You don't capitalize on the opportunities of the fandom. You doing that with, with She-Hawk, with the whole muscle woman and shit and the snoo snoo stuff. You're capitalizing on that, but you won't capitalize on Roger Rabbit and his hot ass wife, Jessica. What's wrong with you? It's the same thing with um, with Brie Lawson. She's acting like a bitch. And then one day when she was in The Tonight Show or some shit, she looked fucking hot. Wearing that black outfit, showing her, you know, cleavage a bit. She, she looked hot in that black dress. But when she was showing, showing that cleavage, guarantee you how much you want to bet Disney told her, yeah, people hate you. Start looking a little bit more attractive. Because... People don't see you as attractive because you're a bitch. It's like, yeah, Brie Lawson is acting like a bitch. Sorry, ladies. When you act like a bitch, it's unattractive and no one doesn't want to even want to touch you. And I'm talking about sexual wise, but it's probably, that's probably what you want anyways, right? You want your pussy to literally fucking be, you know, what what Cartman says, you, you want your pussy to, you know, 
shrivel up and die. <laughs> Be powdered dust. <laughs> Uh, I'll say you. I'll say this. At least Jessica Rabbit gets some, all right. <laughs> literally, you get that shit in this movie. Literally, like Eddie Valley is literally like, oh, um, better, better, better lover than a driver, right? And Jessica Rabbit is like, you better believe it, Buster. <laughs> you know, so shit like that, man. That's how you know this movie's not. It's not for kids, but kids could watch it. I watched this movie so many times as a kid. And there was things that I knew that were mature for me, but now that I watched it now more as an adult, last time I watched this movie, I was 18 years old, and I knew it was mature too, when I watched it again when I was 18. Now that I'm 29, and I re-watched it again, I'm just like, there's certain things that I didn't like pick up until now, and I don't know why I didn't pick it up when I was 18 years old, you know, because some I was just showing my um, my nieces and nephews and everything like that. Oh, well, I was showing my um my cousins actually, um, and I was just uh, explaining to them about the movie and everything because like they were watching it. They were like, "Oh my god, ne- they never saw this movie before," you know. So I thought it was also I thought it was really cool to show my cousins this movie when I was eighteen years old because they they deserve to watch this movie, you know, because this movie is great. And there's some people on YouTube that think that. You know, this this is a movie that that will get lost in the future because people recognize because people won't recognize these cartoon characters. To be honest, that's their fault. You mean to tell me you're gonna watch a movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit and you're not gonna know all these cartoon characters are in it, like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck? I'm kind of allowed to watch the video. Literally, in a, and the brother was like, oh, I know that's Donald, but who's that? Literally pointing at Daffy. And I'm like, you're older than me, and you don't know Daffy Duck? My grandparents know Daffy Duck. The fuck? My mom knows Daffy Duck. What the fuck? This, that's the type of shit that I'm like, how can you, how you been living under the rock for the, for the past, all your life? This movie again is ahead of its time, man. And and there is a video out there. I I didn't watch the video on YouTube because I don't care for fucking motherfucking haters. I hate this movie, man. You're gonna talk shit about this movie. You think this movie is shit? This movie's not shit. And if you think this movie is shit, then I'm gonna say you're racist. Why? It's because this movie talks about racy stuff. It doesn't go hardcore on it like the book does, but it mentions it. And you see it, and it affects the tunes, right? And it's a good story and good acting. Like, have you ever seen a Steven Spielberg movie or a Robert Zemeckis movie that does the same thing besides Back to the Future? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There isn't none besides that and Back to the Future. If you could think of anything with those two together... Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg, then let me know, all right? Because the only thing I can think of is Back to the Future and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Did 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 they do Indiana Jones together? I, I doubt that. I know that was more about Steven Spielberg stuff, but um, who knows? Uh, I'll probably find that out later. You guys can tell me. So, if I really want to start, if you really want to get the grasp of it, it starts with a cartoon short in this movie. And Roger is taking care of a baby named Baby Herman. Um, and, you know, hilarious, called to hilariously, hel- yeah, ensues. <laughs> like, you see Roger literally trying to make sure this baby doesn't get literally killed. And Roger is literally dying, <laughs> getting fucked up, Looney Tunes style, every time he gets, you know? And by the time Roger picks up the the refrigerator, grabs baby Herman, and then the refrigerator falls on him, the refrigerator opens up, you see Tweety Birds flying around instead of stars, and he's like, cut! The director, cut, cut, cut! Baby Herman talks, what the hell was wrong with that take? Yo, when I first saw this movie, I was just like, that baby talked. And he said, what the hell? <laughs> Yo! There's so many stuff in this movie, I was like, holy shit. There's even a scene in this movie when three kids, I believe. Yeah, I see the I see the thing right here. Three kids 
or behind the trolley because Eddie goes behind the trolley because he can't go on the trolley because he doesn't have money. And um, um, the kids give him cigarettes at the end of the trip. You know, oh, thanks for the cig- you know, thanks for the c- cigarettes and stuff. So, and the fact that little details of like Eddie fixing the the um, the Valley and Valiant sign, they're getting some bills and then throwing the bills in the fucking trash and then walking away to the bar. It's fucking hilarious to me. Why? Because this this man, this is the 40s, all right? So you could get away with a lot of stuff, especially if you were white. So the fact that Eddie did that, I was just like, yeah, he, he could have got away with that. If you did that now, you'd be fucking, you, you'd be out of your fucking house before you fucking knew it. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's, it's just great. This movie is great. Again, the animation is great. You have references up the ass to... You have references to Dumbo, um, again, Mickey Mouse, Woody Woodpecker, you know, you have um, Droopy in this movie, you know, you even have Tinkerbell in this movie, even though this movie took place in 1947, Tinkerbell should not be in this movie because her movie came out in 1953. And one thing too that I thought about that I didn't think about now until this year, where's Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry's not in this movie. They were trying to get them, but MGM was like, no. Same thing with Popeye. But, you know, they said no. There was going to be a whole scene of, of a funeral scene of them burying um, Marvin Acme. Because um, he was going to, you know, free the tunes and stuff like that. And the tunes loved him and stuff like that. And basically, it was a white man loving color people and color people paying respects because he was actually giving he was actually going to give them the rights to their land you know and then he died because there was another brother that decided to know fuck you and all of this shit yeah when you look at who framed roger rabbit it, it really is and you look at it in a spiritual alignment way you really look at it as like wow a, a brother going after his whole fucking family Really, because he wants to fucking make a fucking freeway. <laughs> so, and a lot of people always point out, what is um, Judge Doom? What what really? What is he really? And I don't want to get to more spoilers, but there is a poster in this movie that eventually you see a gun, and you see a silhouette of a poster with that same gun. Ah. Uh, Right. If once you see that in that movie, that's how you know who he is. All right. Even as a kid, I knew I I in my head I was like, That's him. That's him. That's what Judge Doom really is. That's what he really looks like. And I wanna say this too, Judge Doom can look like any other Disney or cartoon villain. Cause that's his power. His power is to literally transform into any cartoon villain. That that was his that was his his shtick, basically. You needed a villain, you got him. What what type of villain you needed? He created it from himself and he played it. Like an actor would do. You know? And then eventually Judge Doom just got tired. Like he had an accident and then he became wicked and shit. So um that that uh, I, that was one of I, I like to think of the backstory of Judge Doom as like he was a he was this person. And then became corrupt because he was just a fucked up person. I don't want again. I don't want to go more spoiler because if you haven't watched the movie, you should watch it because it's such a good fucking movie. And the fact that look, I'm gonna say this right now. If you see the pictures of Who Framed Roger Rabbit and you don't know these characters, like I'm not talking about Jessica or Roger or Eddie. I'm talking about the cartoon characters that you see, like Betty Boo. Um, um, Daffy Duck and um, Mickey Mouse. If you don't know those, if you don't know those characters at all, go back and watch old cartoons on Disney Plus and one of and HBO Max, because it's on there. And there's no excuse for you to be like, "Oh, I don't want to watch that shit." Because if you watch it, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and you saying, "Who the fuck is that shit?" There's something fuck is wrong with you. I'm dead serious. I'm 29 years old, and I fucking know. 
all these fucking characters. I know all these characters are in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I know all of them. Even the background characters, man. His background characters from from Vantasia and fucking and freaking Sleeping Beauty. There's even if you look hard enough, there's also if you look hard enough, you see Snow White and the Witch hanging out together. What the fuck? Yeah, you see, your, you see, literally Snow White helping her go into a building. That's what happens when and most people are like, where's that scene at? It's when the scene when Eddie goes to Toontown and he crashes. And then he sees, and then you see a whole bunch of, and then you see like the whole um, Toontown things when Eddie's looking through um, the car, then he hits himself and he gets like tweeters around him. He's like, get out. But then all of a sudden there's like, he, you see the whole spectrum of Toontown basically. And you see Toons walking around and stuff like that. So there was that. There was that. And a long time ago, I thought this movie was a Warner Brothers movie, mainly because they had a lot of um, Acme stuff and acme is from wonder brothers and i did hardly they're going to make a wonder brothers movie talking about acme like john cena is going to play the guy that is acme and he and why coyote goes to him so it's going to be this is this movie that wonder brothers was trying to do and it, it, the concept sounds great john cena as as acme or walking for the acme company that that, that that'd be cool to be quite honest i, I actually do want to see that movie because it because the concept alone sounds intriguing, and maybe they want to, and maybe they did the Chip and Dan movie just to do that, and maybe do a future Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie. Look, people say that they should not remake this movie. I want to say this too. To be honest, they should remake this movie, not the Disney version, the book version. We never got the definitive book version of Who of Who the Roger Rabbit, anyways. We had Disney interpretation of it. What about Wonder Brothers interpretation of it? Yeah, Disney bought the rights, but they could just ask Disney, hey, you don't use Roger at all. So let 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 us use him. He will look different from your version anyways. And we can use some of the versions that from the book into our version. Like in your version, your tunes don't die. In our version, they will die. Why not? Why people don't want to have different perspectives or different versions of Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Even the guy that made the book himself literally has different versions of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Who censored, who who p -p 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 plugged, and who whacked Roger Rabbit. So you tell me, guys. All right? Seriously. I feel like this movie could be remade just in a different style. You know, you don't have to do, you don't have to do what you did with the 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 one that we all know and love. You know, I can imagine a hand drawn animation, then a computer one, and then one that's just digital. I can see those. I, I won't mind seeing those type of versions because then then that way it could be like, all right, here's hand drawn, here's um CGI, and here's digital, basically. And then we can look at all three of them and analyze them. I don't know. That's one of the reasons why I won't mind a remake of this movie because you can analyze it. And you don't have to do exactly what you did in the fucking original movie anyways. You have the original book right there. You know? <laughs> so, it's, it's not like people are going to be pissy if you remake Who Friend Roger Rabbit. Disney barely uses the character anyways, guys. All right. I would love for him to, I would love for Disney to use the character again. Disney, you need, you need content. And that's why I kept saying that the, they probably are going to make another Roger Rabbit movie. Cause you wouldn't, you wouldn't say, oh, we're bringing hand-drawn animation back. And you wouldn't have Roger in a cameo of a movie. And you won't have what Chip and Dale was. Chip and Dale movie, res the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie. That movie's fucking dope. And that movie's getting hated too. Fuck off. Fuck off. Why you hate that movie? Why you hate why you hate the Chip and Dale movie, Rescue Rangers? Why you hate that movie? That movie is fucking awesome. It's meta as fuck. And it's funny as hell. And the fact that no one doesn't see that tells me that you look at movies and you suspect 
high class quality, high wine quality type of bullshit. Like Citizens Kane type of shit. You see, movies like Citizens Kane make me sick. Why? Because people look at that movie and every and if and if and if and it's usually with critics and movie ma- and movie people that watch movies too, like YouTubers, like reviewers, critics and shit like that. Again, people look at that movie and say that it's genius and shit like that. But then you look at Who Framed Roger Rabbit and say it's crap. You see, this is why I'll always will. This this is this is this will always be me. You're gonna point out a movie that's you praise to the fucking goddamn moon, and then you're gonna look at a movie that actually gave a fuck and cared, but you're still gonna talk shit about it, right? Look look at the the movie Cool um Cool Ward. The guy that made that movie didn't get his vision through because of the studio, but what if he did? Maybe no one would have liked the movie, but at least he his vision got through. That's all I care about. As long as the original director or the peop- the original person that wanted to make the movie got his vision or her vision out there. That's why that's why I love this movie too. One of the reasons why I do love um Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You you know you don't know you guys. Do you know how many times this movie was about to get plugged? I'm dead serious. They went over budget, like I said. Disney almost pulled the plug for this movie. And it was almost done. Think about it. They were gonna plug um they were gonna plug this game and it was almost done. There was a game, I don't know what game it was, but this but there was a no no. Um Earthbound, Mother 3. Mother 3 for the N64 was 65 or 60 percent done. And Nintendo pl- uh, canceled it. When my friend heard that, he was like, just release the game. You have a game there. I'm like, thank you. Where's the game? Where's the fucking game? It's 60 or 65% done. There's a game in there. Where the fuck is the game, Nintendo? See, it's shit like that that pisses me off. Oh, it's 65%. That means it's not ready. For, for, for gamers like us, that tells me you're literally almost done. What's left? Well, you didn't put the music? <laughs> What what did you, what you what you didn't put that did not fit with that trailer of, of Earthbound Three? Because when you see Earthbound Three for the N sixty four, you're like, that's done, that's completely done. Sixty or sixty five percent. What are you missing? What are you missing? Just release the game and go back and make a special edition for it. That's it. For kind of loud, we do that nowadays. So why you couldn't do it back in the N64 days? Oh, wait, that's right. You hated Earthbound. Come on, Nintendo. St- don't admit it. Just admit that you fucking hate Earthbound. Just admit it. You, you don't want to admit it. Because you, you don't want to admit it. I don't want to get attention to that shit, but maybe one day. Maybe one day again on, on the tangent of Nintendo and Earthbound. But right now, this is just Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Shit like that, though, just pisses me off. It's like, let the original vision come. And if you don't want the original vision to come, then why you hired me? Why you decided to get... If you wanted to make this movie all by yourself, then you should never hired me. And you should never get my opinion of how I should make this movie. That's how I feel with some studios. Why are you going to hire a director or a writer if you're just going to do it yourself? (laughs) <laughs> idiots, all of you are idiots not all of you, but some of y'all and th- this movie too, Who Framed Roger Rabbit man, like th- this this movie is, is is phenomenal it's great as a kid, when you saw Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse on the same screen I was like, I'm looking at the screen like, what the fuck am I looking at this was the Avengers at that time, man, when I watched this movie as a kid, this was my Avengers. Because I, you know how many cartoon shit that I watch as a kid? 
And when I grew up a little bit more, when I was a teenager, getting to my teenager years, my grandparents, they, they got old cartoon stuff. And I watched some of them, especially the old Popeye stuff. The, the fact that Popeye is not in this movie or Tom and Jerry is a crime, especially Dick, Dick Tracy. Look, most people are like, well, why, why you want to look? Dick Tracy is a reference in this movie, which is pretty dope. The reason I say that, even Charlie Brown, the Peanuts, why are they not in this? The reason I mention that is because, the reason I mention that is because um, the Roger Rabbit book, they, they were doing comic strips cartoons, not cartoons that you see on TV, comic book strips that you see on newspapers, which the thing is, that resonated with me so much because as a kid too, I, want, I, I read a whole bunch of shit. Garfield, Peanuts, BC, um, what was it? Um, Hopper and um, Cl uh, Clive or some shit. A little kid with his stuff, um, um, Tiger and shit like that. Like th the most, the most ones that I really read a lot was Garfield and Peanuts, and I loved and I loved them. You know, not to say I didn't like the other ones that they showed on 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 newspaper ones. I did, and I knew some of them because I grew up with them. You know, and the fact that, and when I found out, when I found out that they were in the book of who sent to Roger Rabbit, but they didn't put them in the movie, I'm all like, it would have made sense if they did. I know, I know, I know why you didn't do it because you're trying to do cartoons instead of, I mean, cartoon shows instead of cartoon strips, which is fine. But eventually, the cartoon shows became cartoon strips later on in like the '70s and '80s and shit. Um. Which this movie came out in the 80s anyways, 1988, which this movie is the same age as Chucky. But no, because Chucky came out also in 1988. Mm, you see that? Chucky and Roger Rabbit are the same age. And next year is going to be the 35th anniversary of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. What's Disney going to do? Or is there going to be like a release coming out? There is that, you know, um, limited edition release. So there is that. But I feel like the 30th anniversary of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I feel like something has to happen or maybe some mention or something. I don't care. Some mention would be nice, you know, some acknowledgement, you know. I'm not saying you need to make a fucking goddamn party, Disney, but, you know, just a bit like, oh, you know, this anniversary of a movie that we made, you know, and uh, it's on Disney Plus. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can watch it, you know, for the anniversary of it, you know. So this movie came out in June 22nd. 1988. So for next year or the anniversary of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, if you want to mark that in calendar and watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit on on with your DVD or VHS or on Disney Plus, you could do that. You know, fun note: the VHS copy of Who Framed Roger Rabbit does show Jessica Rabbit's pussy, and I grew up with the VHS version of it, and I didn't knew that. I didn't knew they had that version. I mean, I didn't knew. They had that in that version of the movie until this year. Like, I knew that Jessica Rabbit just showed her vagina and shit like that. Um, but I didn't know what version they showed it on. Like, was it on the DVD? Was it on the, the laser disc? Or was it on the reg um, regular D um, VHS? You know? And it was on the regular VHS. Not on the DVDs and all that shit. So, if you want to get... The original version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, there you go, you know. And if you want to get the original, 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 like the one that came out in theaters, get the um, Laserdisc version. Because I heard in the Laserdisc version, which I haven't seen, and I don't have a Laserdisc player, so I can't confirm this. Supposedly, Betty Boop shows her nipple in that, in that version. One of the reasons why you see her, like, you know, lifting up her little, you know, fixing up her little, um, you know, that thing that goes around a woman's um, legs. She was fixing that up, basically, when she was talking to Eddie and stuff like that. Hinting that her and Eddie had a thing, which I always guessed as a kid and even as a teenager. But now I see more as an adult and now I got more confirmation of that. I'm like, that makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Before... Before Eddie met Dolores, he probably had an affair with Betty Boop. 
I mean, he looks at Betty Boo and he's happy. He's like, yo, what are you doing here? You know, he doesn't want her to see in an ink and paint club because the, the ink and paint club is representing of the cotton club back where white people can go and literally be entertained by black people. And they were being served by black people. You see why I say this movie was ahead of its time? And why do I say that this movie is fucking good and you should watch it? I want to say this. Congress con- Congress itself put this in archives. And that's for a reason. You think Congress would do that for no reason whatsoever? They did that with Wizard of Oz also. These movies that get preserved by Congress, that should tell you something. Oh, because it's so historic. Okay, then. Then why will you talk shit about... Ho- you won't talk shit about Alice... I mean, Alice in Wonderland. You won't talk shit about Wizard of Oz, but you would talk shit about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And you will agree that all oh, Wizard of Oz deserves to be where, where, where that's at with the Congress stuff, but not with Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know how many bad movies that have came out over the years and they never went to Congress, but only movies that are fucking good? Even Back to the Future, they didn't went to Congress, but who think Roger Rabbit did? Why? Why? See, you see, it's something that you guys don't fucking think of, man. You guys don't think. People think, but not a lot of people, man. Don't want to be told and not think. That's why I really haven't spoiled a lot from this movie. Because you guys should watch it. And if you, and if you again, if you haven't, if you don't know any of these Looney Tune characters, oh my goodness. All right. You know what? I'll say this right now before my battery starts dying and shit like that. Hold on. Okay. So, if you... Are gonna watch True Frame Roger Rabbit, and you don't know any of these cartoon characters be- besides fucking Mickey Mouse. You don't talk to me, first of all. Second of all, get this fucking collection the Looney Tunes Golden Collection. All right, some, some, of, the, some of the boxes might say, um, like a hundred, I mean, 350, but this one says 375. Which is the original, 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 original copy of it. Um, which I'm surprised that I got that. Really surprised. But um, make sure that um, they look good. Like they don't look like they've been copied and pasted on a DVD and shit like that. Because that's what, that's what I thought I got. And I think I did. But yet, they still walk pretty well. And you kind of see how, you know, kind of the fading and all that stuff, too. So, trying to get the original copy of it might be a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. But again, it's not bad. It's still good. I highly recommend getting this. If you're going to watch, if you're going to watch Who Friend Roger Rabbit, watch this. Okay? And if you guys know about the Warner Brothers racy stuff, mostly all of them on daily motion so all you have to do is go on daily motion right and if you can't find them on daily motion go to enlightenment slash spiritual on facebook go to video options and it will be all there you just need to find them i put them there you can find them like nothing i had no copyright or anything like that which, thank you, one of us, for not doing that to me. Disney's been doing that to me with the Roger Rabbit shorts, but um, you haven't been doing it when I upload the uh, Sensor 11 shorts on, um, well, Sensor 19 shorts in the um, in my uh, Facebook page. But yeah, get this golden collection. Get it if you're going to watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And also, watch... Oh, the old um, Disney movies like Snow White, 
and the Seven Dwarves, um, Cinderella. Uh, let's see, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Pinocchio. And yeah, and yeah, I was gonna say Peter Pan, but no, no. Watch all of those stuff, and then watch all the old um um Disney shorts too, with you know Donald, Goofy. Mickey and other ones too. So it's on Disney Plus. If you have Disney Plus, you can watch it. If you don't have Disney Plus, then you don't have it. But if you do have it and you have this too, there's no excuse for you to not be like, who are all these characters in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? There's no excuse. No fucking excuse. Because at that point, you're smacking every person that loves animation in the face and that has literally made animation. You guys don't know the history of animation, man. You guys don't know the respect of it. You guys don't know the passion of it. You guys don't know. You guys don't know. You think you know, but you don't. You don't. Look, I'm not saying I'm, I'm an animator. I love to draw and everything like that. But when you see movies like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, man, it's a love letter to your childhood, man. Mainly because you watch this and you watch a, a, a whole bunch of fucking Disney shit when you were a kid. When I was a kid, I mostly watched a lot of this stuff because I was a Looney Tunes fan. And that's why I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit because it resonates with me more as a Looney Tunes movie than a Disney movie, even though Disney make this movie. It's just, there's a lot of Looney, Looney Tunes stuff in this movie, which I love. You know Disney... The, the, the thing is, the reason Disney put a lot of Looney Tunes stuff in the Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie is because they don't have iconic stuff like they do in Looney Tunes. Do they? I don't think they do. They don't have a company like Acme. They don't have weapons that they hit each other with and shit like that. that that's why the people that made the Looney Tunes shorts literally said themselves they are not for children. They're not. They want to be the opposite from Disney. And they did a great job from that. There's tons of documentaries in this, in these DVDs that will literally let you know that these shorts are not for kids. When you get these shorts, there's literally a disclaimer once you get to disc two or three that literally says these shorts are products of their time. And you may be offended by them. But they're all products of their time. And me over here thinking that they have all the Sensor 11, Sensor 19 shorts in here. They don't. You need to get them by daily motion so you can download them on a fucking flash drive, which I did. Now I have to show you guys that because some people might not know that. Look, I've showed, I've showed this a thousand times and I'll keep showing it again because obviously people might not, people might not know it. The Sensor 19 shorts right here. I have it on my flash drive. Right here. And they're all from Looney Tunes. Now, the thing is too, if you, there's a part in Who Framed Roger Rabbit when Eddie goes to Toontown and he's driving along and you see all the tunes and all that. There's one, there's one, one instance that you see a tar, a tar kid. A tall kid. Like, th that was a Disney... I think that was a Disney short or a Disney comic book that you see a fox and you see a, a, a tar... Um, literally tar, but it's just as a, as a black boy. That right there is in Who Framed Roger Rabbit in the background. Why? It's because these animators, like, I've said this before and I said it again. When you're walking on anime, when you're walking on cartoons, sometimes you're going to put stuff in the background that people won't notice. Why? Because you need to get your creative juices out there, man. You need to get some of the, you need to get some of the stuff that's in your head out there. That's why some of the stuff that you see in these shorts and old movies, they put it there because they need to, they need to let off the steam. 
why do you think in um in the Rugrat stuff they they made um they made like little um post-it notes of literally Tommy's dad literally looking at Tommy and being literally a dick to Tommy and he's drinking and shit and he's being a drunk like Tommy's dad is being a drunk and abusing his child the animators make that because they were bored and they want to fucking get that out there same thing with um SpongeBob you have, you have you have got, you have no idea how many times these animators literally had a Pictures of Spongebob fucking Patrick or Patrick fucking Spongebob. Why do you think they did that? Because it. They spend hours drawing guys. Not seeing their wife or kid. No shit they're going to draw something that's probably fucked up or provocative. What do you think Jessica Rabbit exists? What do you think the short Snow White and the Saving Dwarves exists? <laughs> Why do you think red exists? If you know, if you know that one, if you don't know who red is, she was the inspiration for for Jessica. Basically, red is Jessica. So, who's red? It's basically Little Red Riding Hood, but she looks sexy, as fuck. Yeah. So there's that. So anything else I could talk about with Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Besides some of the shorts you, sh- you should see, Bosco's not in it. Bosco is like one of the first cartoons with live action for Warner Brothers, and he's not in the movie. The fuck? What the fuck? Maybe in the background. Maybe I'm sim- look like there's so many stuff in the background. It's like Ready Player One, man. You might see it years later. So. Especially if you have the original VHS copy, which might look a little bit more weird because it's all grainy and all that stuff, but it's still worth it. It's still worth getting. So that's really it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys for taking the time here to listen to me about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And there hasn't been a lot of stuff on Who Framed Roger Rabbit since I've been looking on YouTube. So might as well make more content of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Why not? I will do more once I get the book and the DVD. So, yeah, that's it. And if you guys haven't watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you should. It's great. But it will be more better if you watched these and the and some of the Disney shorts and some of the Disney movies up to Pinocchio and then watch this movie. You definitely have a better time. Oh, hell yeah. You definitely would have a better time watching this movie. Fuck yeah. Are you kidding me? Seriously. It's, it, again, yeah. You will have a good time watching this movie. So that's it, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I literally have the SpongeBob game right here. Um, good game. Guess what? My grandparents gave me this, so... I'm not pissed. I didn't buy it. (laughs) But um, I'll see you guys later. Be safe. And again, tell me what you guys think about the video. Tell me what you guys think about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And have you seen any of the Looney Tunes shorts? And have you seen any of the um, Disney shorts? I have as a kid, but I haven't watched them in such a long time. And I... And I probably most likely we will have to re, re, re-watch them because I really don't remember some of them. I, I do remember some of the, you know, the, the Chip and Dale ones with um, them fucking around with um, um, Donald Duck. That is hilarious. I think there was also a B also that was fucking with Donald also. Donald just gets fucked sometimes, man. Yo. And I did saw some of the Goofy shorts uh, when he didn't have ears around that time i remember that yeah that was a real time for goofy <laughs> uh i remember i remember that short actually so i'll see you guys later be safe and how many times i'll set that but hey love you guys